So now we're ready to go ahead and project our high poly object over onto our low poly object and create a normal map and also transfer the diffuse map, which is the texture, the color information, onto our low poly game object. So first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and select our target. I'm going to go ahead and hide the target handle two layer because that's our second projection. We'll deal with that one after we handle the first projection, which is going to be the handle with all the rope twines going around it. I want to project that information first. So let's go ahead and select target one, which is this object here. Alternatively, you can just select it if you're not sure which one it was. And then come up here and we're going to drop this down. I want you to select rendering tab. Now with the rendering tab open, we want to come over to the lighting and shading menu, drop this down and go ahead and select transfer maps. Now with transfer maps open, so I'm going to come up to edit and I'm going to reset the settings to make sure that all my settings are the default settings and we can follow along. And that way I don't miss anything throughout this because you have to have these settings exact or the outcome will not be right. So what we want to do is check that our target mesh is the target underscore one shape. We can see that that's the one we had selected. If this is not selected, it means that you opened up the transfer maps window without this object selected and it will look pretty much like this. And if that's the case, go ahead and just select this object and click add select. And that's going to add it. And we'll go ahead and take this search envelope up to, let's say, two for right now, just so I can show you exactly what's going to happen in this projection. I'm going to drop down display and I'm going to go to both. And you're going to notice this little red box has popped up around our object. It is pretty much a duplicate of your base game object and it's out from it. It's extruding out from it. And what's happening here is if you look, anything that is inside of this red envelope is going to be picked up during this projection and transferred over onto our game object. What's going to do is it's going to treat this kind of like a plane. If you think that there is a zero portion, and then this would be 2% out from zero and anything that's below this would also get picked up. So anything inside of this is going to get picked up. So you can have objects look like they are you know, intruding into the game object to make the game object look like it maybe has creases going into it. Or you can make it look like the detail is coming out of it like our rope twines are going to look like they are coming out of this and it's going to give this low poly game object a lot more detail but that's exactly how this works it's going to capture everything that's inside of our red envelope so we need to make sure that our high poly game object is going to be inside of this as well as select it as a source mesh so let's go ahead and make our source layer visible so i'm going to just click v on this and i'm going to come in and zoom in here a little bit and i can notice already that i'm not exactly capturing everything on this high poly object. You can see that parts of our twines are outside of the red envelope. And we can't have that. We need to make sure that everything we want to pick up is inside of the red envelope. So let's go ahead and raise this up to about 2.5%. I'll press enter. And I can see that that's pretty much where I want it. That's going to capture all of these little rope twines. There's nothing sticking out of it. And that looks really good. Now, the great thing about this is it's going to ignore anything that's not inside of the red envelope. So we don't have to worry about this area up here. We just have to make sure that the areas that we want to pick up are being captured inside of this red outline. Now, alternatively, you can, uh, instead of using the search envelope, we can right click on this envelope and select the vertices of it. And you can also scale them out that way and treat it just like you would any mesh. You can see that I can do that. Now, be careful because say, for instance, I were to stretch this out like this and the bottom is not stretched out. That's going to seriously warp the projection. So you want to try to keep a uniform scale coming out from the object, especially on hard surface objects when you're doing a hard surface projection. This would be considered a hard surface object. If it was an organic model, you can usually get away with stretching it a little bit here and there, you know, like if you were making some pants and projecting some high poly pants onto a low poly pair of pants and that would be okay. So be very careful about trying to scale these envelopes out and make changes to them because as you change these, you also warp the face that's projecting in between the game object and the envelope. Just keep that in mind. So try to make sure when you're doing hard surface assets, you just break the projection up as many times as is necessary to make sure you're not having to warp these faces on the envelope between the faces on the game object. They need to be rather uniform in shape, size, 
that way they'll pick up correctly because otherwise you're going to warp the projection. So with this set to 2.5, we're just fine. We don't need to change the element at all. So let's go back to object mode. We need to assign the source mesh. We need to tell it what all is it going to pick up. Well, right now it's set to all other meshes and that's the default setting. So anything that's visible in the scene will get picked up by this projection. Well, just to be a little more accurate and just to make sure that we are picking up the game object, I'm going to go ahead and select our high poly object and click add select it. And that's going to show me that I have the source shape set as the source and the target shape is set as our target. Now we want to define what output maps do we want. Well, we know we want a normal map. That's our bump map. And we also know that we want a diffuse map because that's going to be our color information. So I'm going to click on both of those and you're going to notice that it pops up here. And we have to set up where we want it to go. So in the normal map, I'm going to go ahead and define a location. I'll go ahead and open this folder up and it's asking me, well, where do I want to put this? I'm going to go to source images. I'm going to right click and create a new folder. I'm going to call this projections. Now I'm going to enter into there and I'm going to call this the handle one underscore in for normal. I'll just add a one on the end there and I want to save it as a Photoshop. That's fine. So I'll go ahead and click save and I want it to be a tangent space and you can go ahead and leave everything else default. It should be file format Photoshop and include materials with tangent space and using the Maya common settings. Now in the diffuse map color, we got to just tell it where we want it to save. And so we want to save it in our projections. So we're going to go ahead and call this the handle one underscore D for diffuse. I'll save it as a PSD, so a Photoshop document. And I want to go ahead and just leave everything here default. That's fine. So this looks pretty good. Now let's come down. You can go ahead and leave connected maps turned on. This is fine. We'll go to Maya Common Output. Now this is where you're going to set up the size of the output. Now I want to go ahead and set it to a 4096 by 4096. Again, I'm creating my texture images at double the resolution that I'm going to wind up making them. I'm going to shrink these down to 2048 by 2048. So I want to create them at 4096 by 4096. And when I'm all done, completely finished with all my texturing and everything put together, then I'll shrink it down and it'll look really nice. That's usually the way you want to do it. Now I want to transfer this. You can leave this to world space is fine. And the sampling quality. Now this is very important to take note of. To put this into a very fast perspective, I can say it like this. The higher you raise this value, the longer the projection is going to take but the more detailed and accurate the projection is going to be. Something like a high 8x8 would be a production quality. That would be the final projection you're going to run. You're 100% positive that this is exactly how you want this to turn out. Me, for something as simple as this object, I would just do a medium 4x4 because I think that this isn't, there's not a whole lot that this is going to need to pick up. It's just picking up all these little rope twines going down. It's a very repetitive pattern and it's going to run a 4x4 and give me a very decent result when it's done. So I'm just going to set it to a medium 4x4. You can run all four of these projections after you're finished with this tutorial and check out the different results to see the change in quality versus how long each one takes to run. A medium 4x4 will probably be done in under 10 minutes on my computer. Again, this is something it's going to be based on how good your computer is and how good its processing power is for how long it's going to take based on each setting that you choose. So a medium 4x4 I think is going to be just fine for me with this little project here that we're doing. So I'm just set that to a medium 4x4. And the filter size 3, Gaussian and 1, you can just leave everything else default as well as the other drop downs. You just leave it default. Once all of this is set up and you have all your paths defined and everything's ready to go, you're ready to run your projection. But before you do, I will warn you, this could take a while to do. So usually whenever I'm getting ready to bake something out, if I think it's going to take a long time, I usually have like a little side project or I'll go, I don't know, Facebook or something, because this can take a fairly long time to run if you don't have a really good computer or if it's a very large projection. Again, this is just a very tiny projection, a very simple one. So it should be done in under five to 10 minutes. So it'll, it'll be a very fast projection. So I'm going to go ahead and click bake and close. And I'm just going to turn the page here in the video. Now the projection has finished. Let's take a look at the results. We can go ahead and hide your source layer. And you'll notice there is our target layer. And go ahead and zoom in a little bit and kind of pan your camera up and down. You can see that normal map in effect. 
this turned out really, really nice. I'm very impressed with this outcome here. But now you can see this is a very flat game object. And that projection has added this detail that kind of tricks your eyes into thinking there are all these little rope twines going around it. So let's go ahead and run our second projection and then we'll piece those together. So let's come over here. We no longer need this part. We need our handle two layer. So we'll go ahead and unhide that and then we'll go ahead, select it. We'll come up here to lighting and shading. Drop this down and select transfer maps again. Now we don't have to change a lot of these settings because we already have the normal map and diffuse color maps checked. We do need to change the name of them because we don't want them to overwrite our originals. And we also can tell that this object does not have any large amounts of detail coming out from it. In fact, it's an exact duplicate and we just want to take that texture that we created from the substance material and we want to transfer that over to the correct location on our UV map for our game object. Because remember, we moved these UVs around when we created that substance. So let's go ahead and just set this to a 0.1. And if I go to the envelope, I can see that that's just going to extrude out. And I'll select both here. Just a very, very tiny amount. So that way it's only going to really project the texture over. It's not going to worry about much else than the diffuse texture and the search envelope is one. You could even really shut off normal map. I'm going to leave it on because there may be a little bit of bump detail that's coming still in that substance. I'm not 100% certain, <laughs> so I'll go ahead and leave that on. Then I'll drop down the source message and we need to add our source. We'll unhide our source layer. Go ahead and select the source over here to make sure you get the right one. We're going to come over here and just click add selected. That's going to add our source object to the projection and then we can come down here and just change the names of our normal and diffuse color so i'll go ahead and open up this folder i'll change this one this was our normal map so i'll change this one to handle one underscore two and i'll just change this to a two so I'll handle two underscore and so this is our second projection of our handle click save and i'll change the diffuse to handle two underscore d and I'll go ahead and run this projection. So everything else should be set up. You'll notice that it does retain your settings. I just reset the settings so we could set this up from start to finish. And we'll go ahead and click bake and close again. Now that that projection is done, I'll go ahead and hide the source layer. And we can see that our textures have moved over to the correct position on our UV map. And I can go ahead and just confirm that by selecting this object, going over to our UV editor, and you can see that if I zoom out here, I was zoomed way in, that they are all now in the correct location. So this is also a great way to transfer textures from one location to another and not just capture detail from the bump map. So in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and combine our projections into single texture files. So we'll have a single diffuse map and a single normal map. And we'll also combine that into the UV snapshot that we created earlier. We boxed in those color areas and we'll go ahead and combine these diffuse textures into that boxed in diffuse texture that we created earlier that we wanted to make to hide our UV seams. If you have any questions or comments please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.